In this video, you'll learn how to create this waved fin facade kind of thing inside of Rhino, which looks really, really cool. Let's get into it. This video has been taken for my Rhino and Revit workflow beginners course. If you're interested in designing some really cool things inside of Rhino and having the ability to document them inside of Revit as well, then this course is perfect for you. It's over two hours long and mimics a real life project, which is actually my studio project and you get access to all of the course files and all the materials you need to be able to successfully work between Revit and Rhino. I'll see you there. What I'm going to do is go into an elevation view or go into a side view. And you can see here, this is the front of the building and this will work okay if we double click on this tab here and change this to shaded. Now we can see our curtain panels there. So essentially our fins are going to be coming up past this curtain wall and it's going to be in line with the core that's sticking out here. And then it's gonna come down as a wave like this and each fin is gonna be different and then it's gonna kick out at the end of, of, of the front of the building here. Now the first thing I wanna do is check the dimensions of the fins. I believe they were, can't remember. I'm just gonna message my group chat to see if anyone remembers. I'm pretty sure they were something like, they stuck out 600 millimeters and then they were 75 millimeters Thick. I'm just gonna go ahead and begin modeling this in. I can't remember exactly, I think it was 675. But the first thing I wanna do, I'm just going to create a kind of reference line that comes straight up. I'm gonna make sure this is orthographic. And I'm just gonna bring this straight up and I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna hit enter there to bring up the tool again. And then bring this one out 600 millimeters so that this is sort of a reference point to work off of. It's going to hit enter there to finish that off. Now this point here is going to come all the way down. Now I'm also going to create another one coming off of here because that's about how high we want it to be. And now I'm going to go to the control point curve tool and I'm going to click disable object snap so that we can't snap onto anything. So the back of the fins are going to be straight. On the old model, they were not straight. They were curved with it and um, we didn't want that. We wanted it to be fixed with the mullions um, that are coming down from the building, the vertical mullions. So what I'm going to do is use the control point curve tool. I'm going to actually turn on the object snaps for now. I'm going to be toggling back and forth between them. But what I'm going to do is just roughly draw this shape. I'm going to turn off orthographic so we can do this as we please. And I'm just going to draw in a rough shape of what we want this to look like and it's going to be a bit of back and forth like this it might come in a bit and then come back out and just kind of go down the building creating this wave effect just with a couple of points you don't want to go too overboard with the points because then you can get some messy models and I believe this comes down and this is a junction that we need to figure out I think it's going to come into the building rather than flicking out like it does at the moment I think it's going to come in so I might just go a little something like this and then bring it down and actually probably go to the ground. And I'm just going to turn on the object snap here so that we can snap onto this point here. Now I'm going to click enter and this bottom, I mean this long point, I'm actually going to bring this all the way down as well. Hopefully we did that straight. It looks pretty straight. So now you can see the general shape of the fin, which is going to be this wavy kind of thing. And if we go to a perspective view, we can see this in 2D. Now what you can notice is that some of the points aren't on the same axis as the other points. So what we want to do is actually, you know, make these all on the same axis. So I'm going to go back to that front view. I'm going to click on this line here and press set point or set PT. You're going to see this set points dialog box come up and we want to set the Y plane so that it's aligned to the world. And we're going to then pick a point which we are going to align to. So if I click OK, and I click on this line here, then all of the points are going to be put on this point in the Y axis. And that will make sense once we do this. So I'm actually going to go to a perspective so you can see this a bit better. You can see that point down there is not aligned with the other ones. But if we click on this line here, you can see how they all line up then. And that's what we want. So now they're all going to be in the same Y axis. So let's go back to this front view. I'm gonna delete this line here because that was just for reference. And I'm actually gonna just trim this line here. And I'm just gonna trim that one back. Then I'm gonna trim this top one back as well to that line. And what I can actually do is then just bring this point over and that's fine. 
Now we've got our vertical fin. This line comes all the way back down. It's a solid surface, but I'm gonna make sure that all of these points are on the same axis. So I'm gonna highlight them all, press set point again, click OK, and then set them all to this same plane. And we can look at this in perspective to see if that's worked. And as you can see, this line here didn't quite work. So I'm just gonna do that one more time, set the Y axis, and then choose this line here. Now they are all in the same axis again. And you can see what that shape of the vertical fin is gonna look like. And these are gonna come down over into the building. So I wanna make this into an actual shape. So I'm gonna highlight all of those lines so that they're all selected. I'm going to extrude these by typing extrude. And let's see if it comes up, extrude curve and click enter. I'm gonna go into a, probably the perspective view and you can see that the direction of it is coming out the way we want it to. If we wanted to change that, we can click on direction of the top here. And then say, if we go to the top view, we can then choose a direction for it. So we want it to be down here, hold shift to go orth orthogonal. Is that a word, orthogonal? I don't know how that, we want it to be in one direction. We want it to be straight down. So you can choose that direction like that. You can see the dialog box up here is asking us for an extrusion distance. And we're gonna want this to be the thickness of the fins, which I believe is 75, but no one has confirmed yet. I don't think so, nope. So we're gonna press 75. You can see that there are a few other options here. If we want it to be solid, which we do, we're gonna click solid. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and type 75 and press enter. And there we go, we've got our fin, which is a solid object. That looks pretty good. And so what I did previously was then copy this over you know, multiple times and I arrayed it across the facade, but we want these all to be different. And we could then, you know, array this and then make them all different. Or what I'm going to do is use the tween curves command. I think that's what it's called. And so we're gonna give this a crack and see if it works. So I'm just going to select all of these curves. I'm just holding shift to select multiple ones. I'm gonna actually join these by typing join. And now what I'm going to do is type tween and tween curves should come up. So what the tween curves command does is that you choose two lines and by tweening between them, it's then going to you know, look at the differences between the two lines and then create a pattern between them depending on you know, the parameters you set. So I'm going to go down to my front or the top view I should say, and I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to find where, that, where those curves are and there you can see it. Just gonna type copy. I'm gonna bring this all the way to the end of the facade, probably about here, because then it will wrap around the facade as well. And so with that done, we can hit enter. So I'm actually just going to delete this extrusion for now, but because we're going to tween between them, we don't need that, but I'm going to move this. I'm just gonna type move, and I'm gonna move this off of the facade. We wanna make sure it's aligned with the actual facade and bring this down to the end of the building. And my goodness, it's being laggy at the moment. So I'm just gonna actually lock this on the end of the facade here. We're gonna have a look into the perspective view to see if this is how we want it to be. Obviously it's not. So again, what we can do is move these points and we're going to want to align it to the bottom. I'm going to my front view here. I'm just gonna bring this down to where we want it to be, which is you know down here. And that's perfect, that's on the edge of the building. What we could do is actually bring that in a little bit. So I'm gonna go on here, again, move it over, but I'm going to turn the object snaps off. I'm just gonna select, actually what I wanna do first is select that point and now turn it off, disable that. And then bring this up. It's gonna bring it onto the edge of the building. And I don't really need this to be perfect, but we can just you know place it there and that's gonna look pretty good. So now it's in line with this other one. You can see we've got two points that we can now tween between. That's pretty funny to say. So now what I'm going to do is type in tween curves and I'm going to select both the curves that we want to tween between. <laughs> now with those two selected, we can hit enter and you can see that it's tweening between <laughs> those two lines. And I've accidentally just hit enter there, but um, what I want to do is actually test that they are different because at the moment they don't look different. So now obviously the reason why they're all exactly the same is because the start curve and the finishing curve are exactly the same. So the points between them, the tweens between them 
are going to be exactly the same. So what we need to do is undo that and then edit one of these points or one of these lines. So what I'm going to do is just move these points over a little bit and we're just going to move the direction of them and make them look, you know, a little bit different than the other one. So I'm just going to go ahead and move these points out. This one can come out a bit more. This can even come down and out. And so really we're just trying to create some variation in the fins because when we tween between them, you're going to see that it's going to populate them all to be different. And that's what we want. Bring this one up. This one can come up as well. Maybe even just bring it there. This can come out to there. Then this one here. Then the last one up a bit. And this one can come across in line with it like that. All right, so now we've got two completely different lines. You can see that here they are different. So I'm going to select both of these, press tween curves, and let's have a look if this tweens between them. There we go. We can see that they are now being tweened between. And I'm going to maybe make this a few more than six because we want it to line up with the mullions. So I'm actually just going to go back to Revit and I want to figure out what the distance between these mullions are because then we can calculate how many fins we need because we want them to be aligned with the mullions. I'm just going to go to the south elevation so that we can see the mullions and you can see the current facade doesn't line up with the mullions which is also why we're redoing it. I'm just going to select this here, use the measurement tool, and just measure between the two mullions and it, the spacing should be around 1300 there. 1286.7, it's a bit random really. If we go from the middle to the middle, this will show it better. 1287, so I'm not sure if we're going to keep these spacings anyway. I might do them 1300 apart just to make it easy or perhaps even 1400 apart. Let's see if anyone in my groups messaged me. All right, I'm gonna do them 1400 apart. So we've got 1400 mil panels. And so we can adjust the curtain wall to be, you know, correlated to the fins. So if I move this over to the inside of the mullion about here, and you can see that it's currently moving it a bit too high. So I'm gonna just turn off object snaps again. I'm just gonna guesstimate I'm just going to place it on here and you can see it's moved it a bit too high again. So now I'm going to measure between these two points by using a polyline. Turn on object snaps, but I'm just going to measure between those two. So down the bottom you can see that it's 36,000 apart. So what is 36,000 divided by 1400? It's about 26. So we're going to want 26 fins between these two points. So I'm going to select those two again, tween curves, and the number is going to be changed to 26. And so you can see that it doesn't line up with the current mullions, and that's fine because we're going to have to edit those anyways. We're going to hit enter there. And now you can see we've got this wavy facade, which is a lot more interesting than what we had before. Now, whether I like this coming all the way down or not, I'm not too sure. I think it might be better for it to stop maybe up here. Oh my goodness. What I think we can do is just give this a crack and we'll see if it looks all right or not later. But let's move on. What we're now going to do is select all of the last created objects and I'm in the select tab here. I'm going to click on this button here. So now all of those are highlighted. I'm just going to make sure those two are selected as well. Now I'm going to extrude these curves again by typing in extrude curve. And you can change the, change the direction if you want like we did before. Rather than having this offset from both sides, you can see that it's currently on the flush end of this side here, of this facade I should say. And then if we move around without it lagging too much, have a look down here, you can see that it's flush up against this um, inside edge. So what we can do is extrude it towards this side here where my mouse is and we're going to move that out 75 mils. So the settings at the moment solid yes extrusion distance 75 both sides no. This is what we want so I'm going to hit enter and now we've got some vertical fins. I'm going to start up Enscape 
and whereas this is going to make me lag like a bitch it's going to be worth it to be able to see what this looks like in person and we're going to have a walk around down here to see if it's actually you know what we want because i'm not sure i'm not 100 percent on whether that's a good idea or not but we're going to give it a crack and see what it looks like in enscape and then after that i'm going to make sure i save this file because i haven't saved it yet so i'm just going to click save as i'm going to bring this over now we can have a look at what this looks like by actually walking around it and you can see it's got that nice wave to it which is actually quite nice and then it comes all the way down to the bottom hmm what i might actually do is take a screenshot of this or a render and then see if the group likes it or not all right so i've just sent that to the chat we'll have a look if they uh we'll have a sus if they want it to go all the way down i'm not too sure about that but let's keep on going. From here, it's really just design options for myself and my group. And so I think we should just move on and let's export this out to Revit and then show you how to actually bring this back into Revit, link it so that whenever you update this file, it updates in Revit as well, which is a super handy tool. 